Hey everyone, if you ever designed a concrete column or you're planning to, you need to know more than just calculating the axial and moment capacity of a concrete column. You also need to know the detailing rules that you need to follow by the code. And in this video, I'll show you the longitudinal and transverse detailing rules per ACI 318.14. Let's go. I created this PDF with the longitudinal and transverse rules from ACI 318.14, where I grab each code section and have a little visual of what those rules are. If you want to download this free PDF, head over to the description below and click on the link that I provided. All right, so the first rule or the first set of rules are for the longitudinal reinforcement and the code provides the minimum and maximum reinforcement ratio. So if you have a cross section of your column, the code states that your steel reinforcement for the longitudinal rebars need to be between 1% and 8%. You're calculating the area of the steel rebars, the longitudinal rebars, dividing by the concrete area, the gross area of your cross section. And if that ratio is between 0.01 and 0.08, you're good. I would caution, however, to not go beyond 4 or 5% because you will likely need to have lap splices in your concrete column. So probably around 4% or so is enough for your column and you have enough room to have proper reinforcement so that you don't over reinforce your column and have a hard time getting a good concrete consolidation. This could lead to honeycombing, which is when the concrete is not properly consolidated and voids are generated between the aggregate. Now, we know more or less how much steel we need to have in just a ballpark, one and 8%. How about the minimum number of bars? Well, the code pretty much tell you to put one at each corner at the very minimum. That's what this code statement is in chapter 10 of ACI. If you have a triangular column, which those are rare, you need at least three rebars. If you have a rectangular column or square, you need four. And if you have a circular column, which is item C, you need at least six longitudinal rebars. How about the minimum bar spacing? Again, to avoid honeycombing, you don't want your bars too closely together. So that's why the code says that it's at least one and a half inches, this minimum spacing. Note that this is clear spacing. It's not the center to center spacing. It's from the edge of the rebar. It has to be at least one and a half inches, one and a half times the diameter of the longitudinal rebar or four thirds the nominal maximum size of the coarse aggregate. We know the minimum spacing. Now what's the maximum bar spacing? I have this item for the longitudinal reinforcement here and also for the transverse reinforcement later. Item B specifically states that no unsupported bar shall be farther than six inches clear on each side along the tie from a laterally supported bar. What that means is that that clear spacing between one supported bar at the corner and an unsupported bar, which would be this bar here that there's no support on the sides, this distance has to be less than or equal to six inches. Now, if that becomes more than six inches, what do you need to do? Well, you need to somehow support this bar. And what we could do is provide a cross tie here. And now we have these two supported bars and this spacing can be more than six inches. Those were the rules for the longitudinal reinforcement. How about the ties, the transverse reinforcement? The first basic rule is the minimum bar diameter. This is going to depend of the diameter of your longitudinal rebars. If they are number 10 or smaller, go with number three ties. If they are number 11 or larger, or if the rebars are bundled, which is when they're close together here and you're using two bars as one to get more steel, you're gonna use number four ties. How about the minimum and maximum spacing? Just like the longitudinal reinforcement for the transverse reinforcement, we also have a minimum and a maximum spacing. And what the code says is that the clear spacing shall be at least four thirds of the diameter of the aggregate. And that's 
similar to the longitudinal rebars, this is a clear spacing, as you can see here, from the face of one tie to the face of the other tie. How about the maximum spacing? The maximum spacing is not a clear spacing, it's actually from center to center. And the code says it has to be the minimum of 16 times the diameter of the longitudinal rebar, or 48 times the diameter of the tie bar, or the minimum dimension of the column. If you have a cross section of the column here, the width or the depth, you would take, in this case, visually the width. One thing to be aware of is that the code also has a requirement for when columns are experiencing shear. If your column is also needing ties for shear reinforcement, you would use this table and see what the maximum shear reinforcement is. And what this is going to do is probably tighten up your shear reinforcement or your ties because they're also working as they would be in a beam. How about the arrangement of the ties? This is the previous statement from chapter 25, where we already read statement B about the six inch requirement, but we also have item A, which pretty much says that you have to have support of at least 130 degrees. So for our example here, what's wrong with this rebar? We have the supports on the corners, the four corners are supported, and we know they're supported because this angle is less than 135 degrees. Now we have four unsupported bars. We can have just one alternate rebar that's not supported. So in this case, we have supported, not supported, not supported, supported. So if we put a cross tie here, we'd be fine as long as we meet the other requirements. So right now, this column is not good. And what could we do to fix this design? The code also gives certain scenarios in the commentary to illustrate what is and what isn't permitted. So in this case, if we use less rebars and change the size of the column to something that still works, it would, we would be fine. Or in this case here, you could add cross ties in both directions actually if you had more longitudinal rebars. Another example, you could add a stirrup in the middle. It may look a little bit strange, but as long as that angle in the interior tie does not exceed 135 degrees, we are good. And the last one here is you could have a set of overlapping closed ties as it is shown here. All of these examples, they are permitted by code and you could rearrange your ties to be within code requirements using any of those strategies. As I mentioned, this PDF is in the description of the video. You can go over this PDF if you're doing a homework problem, if you are studying for the PE exam or designing a concrete column. I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video and if you have suggestions for future videos. And I'll see you next time.